are before us and you have them before the, the vote takes place on a council meeting. Now, that's one of the, one of the, one of the ways that I want to bring it to you. I want to make sure that you know what's going on. I want to make sure that we get your input on all the issues that are affecting El Paso because after all, you are what makes El Paso great in the city. Because all of you are great and we live in a great city. All those issues sounded like a way to improve transparency. I mean, what are the other ways that you are going to improve transparency as a city council member moving to the mayoral city? Well, transparency is obviously very important. We have this cloud hanging over us right now. The the uh, Texas Rangers investigating us, investigating Park Council. Uh, we also have a mayoral candidate who's under investigation by the Texas Rangers, and he hasn't told you that. But one of the things that we need to do is we want to make sure that we have you as active members of our government. We also want to make sure that as mayor, I make sure that we bring in all of the city representatives, that I bring them together and to address the issues that are before us. But in order to do that, they need to understand everything that's going on in the city. And so by going out and talking to everyone in the city, and by having special council meetings in different parts of El Paso, they're going to understand what the needs are of all of El Paso. And so that's one of the things that I want to do. And I want to make sure that we continue our finance and audit committee uh, meetings that you, the voters, voted for and that I championed. In 2012, you passed that ordinance. We have actively been transparent and provided you information. And when these reports are done, they're not given to the city manager like they were at EPISD. They are given to you, the public, first. They are given to the committee, and then the city manager. So that you have first, the first, you are the first ones that are informed of everything that's going on at city council. The arena issue. How are you going to handle that? One of the things about the arena issue is there were a lot of meetings that were held beforehand before the arena ever even went out to vote. And one of the things that I want to do is, again, because I bring government to you, you'll know about these issues, not after the fact, but before the fact. But as far as the arena is, is, is going on, and I think we've heard a lot of information, there's more meetings going on right now. I ask you to attend some of those. Uh, one of the things that we need to do, and uh, one of the things that I asked firsthand was, can we send it back to the voters? And then I think you saw all the, the information as to all the legalities that we have to go through and all the hoops and bounds that we have to go through because we have a contract with the community. But I think it's important that we hear from the community, that we hear from you, the rest of the community, as to what you want to see in our city. I will tell you that I sit on the Texas Municipal League Board, and when I talk to Mayor Maso of the city of Frisco, and they, that's where the Dallas headquarters is, and when I asked him, how did you dream up of you know, investing in something like this? And what he told me was, Representative, he said, we're not a destination city like El Paso. We have to invent ourselves. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to invent ourselves. We are a great city. We just need to believe it. All of you need to believe it. We're a great city and we're great people here in El Paso. Amen. Well, I think you, you've heard us address the issue that we're not a sanctuary city. There is no definition of a sanctuary city per se. Uh, law enforcement actually complies with all the federal rules and regulations, but they are not immigration officers. And so if the, if the government, if the federal government, if the Republicans want us to impose federal regulation, then by all means they need to send in the federal government in here. But as far as us, we have our resources are limited. We are doing the best that we can with what we have. I mean, funding public uh, public safety is not cheap, ladies and gentlemen. More than half of the budget is for public safety. And so if they want to add more to, the, to us, more issues that we need to address, then they need to give us more money for that. Because we cannot do it without that. And with that, we will oppose sanctuary cities. We will oppose being called sanctuary cities and then them having to hold the stick over us and say, we're going to penalize them, we're going to take away your funds. What are you three the top priority issues for El Paso to improve El Paso? Well the top three priorities, and I think everyone, I think everyone here has already stated them, 
The top priorities, obviously, are holding the line on taxes, uh, making sure that we bring good paying jobs to El Paso and that we expand our local tax base, that we also help local businesses in El Paso grow and expand. And then thirdly, we need to have a plan to improve all our streets. Because what we have right now, and we have some, some certificates of obligation for street improvement that does not cover every, every street in El Paso. And every street in El Paso, I think by now, needs to be addressed. And we cannot annex more property until we address what we already have. And so with that, those are the top three. The taxes, the, the quality of life, which is jobs, and, and thirdly, improving our infrastructure, which is, which is really our streets. You know, I there's a lot of information that that is about me, and you can you can find it in our in my um, campaign website. It's Emma Acosta for El, for El Paso Mayor .com. Um, I want to thank you for being here. I'm asking you again to vote for Emma Acosta for mayor. April 20 April 24th, early voting starts so May 2nd, and the election is uh, Saturday, May 6th. I want to thank the Northeast Democrats for endorsing me. And I also want to thank AFSCME for endorsing me in the back. Thank you so much. One of the things that I do want to share with you is that I was a, a public servant before I became another public servant. I worked for the city for 30 years. And, and as such, I worked on many issues concerning city employees. And so I believe that's one of the reasons that I continue to uh, support uh, AFSCME and all the city employees in El Paso because they are the fabric that makes the city run. If you didn't have city employees, then our city would not be functioning. So again, I ask you for your vote uh, on, on doing early voting, April 24th, May 2nd. I'm asking you if you go to the actual election day, on Saturday, May 6th, I ask you to vote. Emma Acosta, your next mayor, because I love El Paso. Yay!